Before we get into it, just some interesting facts I just want to highlight regarding the theme, because the theme is why one size does not fit all, like a shoe. Okay, everyone has a different size, a different requirement. So what has changed in the workplace is 40% of workers in Asia Pacific are mobile. What that means is they don't all sit at their desks. Another 40% of workers don't use their desk phone. I don't use my desk phone. I always use my mobile phone. And just to add on that, um, CEOs are looking to find new talent, improve talent in their companies and their offices. By doing so, they're encouraging employees to work in a more open and creative environment. This is why we're starting to see offices change. So they're creating an environment which is allowing people to work closer together. Um, lastly, a couple of interesting trends I want to highlight regarding office space is that the traditional office space, similar to the office spaces that we probably sit in, over 30% of the space is empty. Our office is like that. And if you look at costs in terms of operating an office, after HR, labor and wages, wage costs, real estate is the second highest operating cost for a business. So we've seen office spaces move in a more uh, mobile way. So people still spend, this is working time, how much of the time do they spend in the office? And we highlight this because the people we're speaking to are office occupiers. You don't need as much office space anymore because people don't spend as much time in the office. So people spend 55%, this is from a recent study, 55% of their time actually in the office. The rest of the time, the other 45%, they're either off-site, they're at home working, I know I do that, or they're in taxis, airports, lounges, you know, with Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth connectivity, it makes people a lot more mobile. And, and lastly, cafes, libraries. So what we're seeing is the change of the modern workspace from the traditional corporate office to people spending half their time outside the office working just as productively. So I know our management is like this, but organisations don't care how or where people work as long as they deliver results and performance. That's the key point. And the new flexible uh, working space environment giving people the opportunity to work outside or inside the office allows that to happen. And that's the transition that we're starting to see now with office space. You know, when we talk about office space, this is a rank in order of significance of features of a new building that tenants value. When this is what tenants value, this is from a CBRE survey, the seven key points that a tenant will value when they're looking at a building. Obviously location, location still remains number one. Floor plate, similar to this building, an efficient open floor plate. The building services and management. But what's here is the X factors. This is something which is quite new. An X factor is something similar to either having a coffee shop downstairs or a balcony in the corner of the office that allows people a bit of flexibility or location to a shopping mall or other factors that are important for the business. So previously it was all about location. Um, we're starting to see uh, more focus on building management, but lobby, those sorts of things aren't as important. People are really focused on location, but more so factors which are intangible. You know, some, some interesting case studies of you know, what makes a building attractive, looking at the criteria. This is an example of a building in Hong Kong. And another one here in Ho Chi Minh City, not too far away. I think location is still important, but nearby amenities, access to coffee shops, proximity to maybe what will be the next metro, uh, parking. Other things are iconic design and structure. When people are looking at a building, they want something that's iconic. The design of this building in Chung Kong Center, the floor plates are 2,000 square meters, the floor to ceiling glass. The other is President of the Place. This is another building in Ho Chi Minh City where the iconic, sustainable, environmentally sustainable design has also been quite attractive. Power is still important. 
ceiling glass, building security. So a lot of these things are still there. But again, the thing we mentioned before is the X factors, what are tenants looking for, not just in the building, but also in the space that they occupy. And when, uh, if you're looking to select the building tomorrow, what will be the must-have buildings that you're prepared to pay for? This is when it comes to tenants, and we highlight this because, again, office tenants are trying to understand what a factor is most important. Again, location, amenities, and floor plate uh, are the similar things. What's not as important is views. Uh, so for occupiers, the key things they look for is a location, amenities, so coffee shops, uh, parking, and also the floor plate design. So trying to have an efficient floor plate, much more than whether it's sustainable, uh, whether there's great views. It's really about the inside of the office, not just the outside. So again, coming back to the key point about the changing, ever evolving workspace, it's really about people, space and technology and having the three combined together. So how does this impact the average person's office? Just very quickly. So the average office has shifted away from paper processing to knowledge brokerage. We're starting to see a focus more on ideas, not manufacturing of products. Offices are moving from an open and non-hierarchical structure. So you're not seeing a boss in the corner anymore. In a big office with walls, everything's a lot more open. We're also seeing more flexibility in work, life, people being measured on performance, um, not their presence. So it's not about just being in the first one in the office, it's about being the one who's the most productive. And technology is the enabler driving this. So this is the major shift that we're seeing, and a lot of it is driven by technology being Wi-Fi, internet access, remote access. That's the driver behind the evolving uh, or evolution of the modern workplace. So I won't spend too much time here, but this is, you can see the shift now from the conventional office to the modern office, which is more open, to the activity-based office. This is the future. People working in collaboration, meeting rooms, um, open workspaces. So the idea is with the evolving workplace, a more efficient workplace, people more mobile, you don't need as much office space, uh, but all you need is the right size in the right location, more open office space, and uh, more uh, telecommunications and more IT. So that's the key point. It manages costs. So finally, uh, just finishing off, so that was the trend that we're seeing in the market today. We're seeing office space move from standard desks for more open creative spaces. So now looking at rates in terms of office space compared to the last time we met, have things really changed? Have the rents moved up? Have they moved down? Uh, to answer that question, not particularly. Rents have remained fairly stable in Ho Chi Minh City. On this side here is the grade B office rent. On this side is the grade A. You can see since 2011, this is the average asking price per square meter per month. Since 2011, up until now, there hasn't been that much change. The average grade A asking rate is almost the same over the last three years. A lot of that is due to supply and demand. So while you see a lot of buildings under construction, a lot of them are not office space which is on the market today. So you can see a lot of major shift in the grade A market and very stable rental as well in the grade B office market. So for any office tenant coming into the market, or if you're negotiating at the moment, there's not going to be a major shift either way. We're finally starting to see things stabilise in Ho Chi Minh City. Hanoi is a different story. There's a large amount of office space, but at least in Ho Chi Minh City, rents are stable. Um, this slide here is vacancy rate. So this is the grade A office vacancy rate. Vacancy rate is availability of office space. And on, the, uh, sorry, on this side is grade B. You can see that overall vacancy since 2011 in grade A and grade B has been declining. So occupancy is high. There is not that much available space in the market. This is a sign of sustainable development and stable supply. And to put things in perspective, I like to always compare Vietnam to the region. This is the uh, office market in the Americas, so the US, uh, this is Asia Pacific with the focus on Ho Chi Minh City. 
and this is Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. What you can see here is in the top five growth markets, Ho Chi Minh City is one of the top five growth markets in Asia Pacific. So in terms of average rents year on year, although we've seen it fairly stable, overall Ho Chi Minh City on average has increased around 7.9%. Jakarta obviously is quite different. What Jakarta is experiencing is what Ho Chi Minh City did in 2006, a peak in the market. But of all the major cities, we're up there in the top five in terms of growth year on year. And this is, so setting the scene in terms of where the market is, we've said rents are fairly stable. There's been a stable uh, or stable slight increase in rents over the last few years. But this is net absorption in Ho Chi Minh City for Q2, Q3, 2014. And what you can see here is net absorption is the take up of office space, how much space is actually leased. What you can see here is very restricted new supply coming online and very limited leasing opportunities for tenants. Uh, even this building here has just finished and already three floors are leased and the rest of the building is under offer. This is something you would not have seen maybe three, four years ago. So on average, you can see the amount of office space, A and B, that is leased every quarter, is approximately 20,000 square meters since 2011 up until now. Last quarter, what we saw was approximately 10,000 square meters of space leased, so half the average. And lastly, this is the office tenants um, by category that we've seen in the market so far. You can see this, there's a split. This is by different sectors. The key sectors for office tenants have been pharmaceutical, finance, uh, technology, like electronics and legal. The bulk, this was number of deals done. So this is important to see. In 2012, a lot of tenants relocated. There were more options for tenants to move. So far, for the first half of 2014, what we've seen is just as many tenants stay where they are as move. So what we're seeing is less options available and more tenants stay put. In terms of deals by size per square meter, what here you can see is there's less larger deals at the moment and more smaller deals occurring. And just lastly, when we talk about supply, these are some different options that are available that are coming on the market. Uh, in the next year, but in terms of office space, in the next 12 months, there aren't that many big buildings coming online. Uh, there's V Combat Tower, which is in Main Square in District 1. This will be the headquarters of V Combat. 25% of it is already committed to the bank. It's a 77,000 square meter. This will be the, uh, one of the largest buildings in Ho Chi Minh City, probably one of the best buildings. Viatel Office and Trade Centre, again a very big building on Kakman Tankam in District 3. It's going to finish next year, but the building will be fully committed to Viatel. It will be their headquarters. So again, there is not much space available there. Lin Tower 2, another building just in District 3, which will be finishing as well early next year. And SSG Tower on Dimbin Fu in Bintang District as well. So you can see of the four big buildings, by big buildings we mean buildings over 10,000 square metres, larger buildings. One of them is already fully leased and the others already have commitment. So you can see there isn't that much space coming online, the market still will be fairly limited. So finally, we're at the end now. In conclusion, average rents across the grey B and grey A office market are fairly stable, but they will be improving slowly. The vacancy rates will fluctuate as new supply comes online, but a lot of this new supply will eventually be absorbed fairly quickly. And because of the limited new supply coming online, uh, we can expect to see rents remain stable. You know, the market has improved. Things are getting better. But we still don't have that many major new occupiers coming in to open up in the market. And the companies that are growing, are taking up the little space that's coming available. So the supply and the demand uh, for office space is quite balanced and we expect that to continue at least until early next year. And just lastly, just finishing off with the building where we are today, and this is part of today's event, this is a good example of the demand for office space. 
Um, we're not Hong Kong, we're not Singapore. Our requirements are fairly, uh, fairly simple in Ho Chi Minh City. People like floor-to-ceiling glass, an open floor plate, natural light, good location. Then this is one building. Uh, this is a good example of a high quality, great B office building. The asking rents in this building are $19 per square meter, so that gives you an idea of what a great big building is. Uh, this building is quite unique because it's got that open floor plate all on the net area and the highest or latest technology lift systems. These are the types of things office tenants are looking for. A flexible open space and a high technology space. Lastly, amenities. Now, having a bank, a coffee shop, simple things like this also appeal to office occupiers. So this building is an example of that. Thank <laughs> you.